What's going on, family? We just want to come say thank you for your support. We've been seeing the likes, the shares, the subscriptions going up, right? We definitely want to be able to continue to do this. We definitely want to be able to make sure that we can provide quality content, the content that you need that's going to move the needle for your business, your family, and everybody in your ecosystem, right? So if you could do us a favor and like share with a friend right don't hold the information share it out two or three people who you know need this information and subscribe to the channel that's how we get to keep the lights on pay the bills right and it's a free thing all you have to do is hit the subscribe button it's real simple it's like right there right there just subscribe and so we're going to make sure that we as a promise to you we're going to make sure that our content continues to get better develop more and that we bring quality people to you and subjects. That's right. We appreciate y'all minding your biz. What's going on? It's another episode of Minding Your Biz. I'm one of your co-hosts, Dr. Black Will. Hey. We got... It's your girl, Miss Bad Financial. That's right. That's right. Coming at you. What's going on? Well, we legacy talking. That's know, right. We just came off... Father's Day. Happy... What is it? Belated Father's Day? I guess it's that's the thing. <laughs> you know, that's the most, like... <laughs> undervalued holiday i know yeah i'll just leave it there that's um, right i, I then, agree uh, i understand and then juneteenth so you know and then juneteenth how about that right which is another undervalued yeah i forgot it was even juneteenth well it's new right it's, it's relatively like, damn, new it, it, y'all close what's happening what's what is today <laughs> It's, uh, it's Juneteenth. freedom day they call it or second in the true independence day they say so yes you know History, we not free story. till we all free. I don't know if people really embody that though. That's a that's a that's a that's a good statement. We're not free till we all free, but we don't really own that. No, for sure. Well, for we sure, don't, we don't really the own poor, that. the people in Texas, in the west western part of the country, was still was still thinking it was slavery. They were still, you know, I mean, I don't think they were rushing on their horse and carriage to ride across to let them know that they were free. But considering the times, it wasn't like you could email them and be like, you're free. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no mail. They had to like, right. you got to ride out and let them know that Stories they... Stories and fables. and <laughs> Yeah, that stuff went, you know, by curry a pigeon, you know, to let them know that they was free. So... I digress. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we still talking legacy. So legacy. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean? Individual legacy. So the lady herself. Legacy. That's a, she left a legacy. She Ooh. fought to get Juneteenth. Oh. A holiday. Mm-hmm. She fought for you know the last five years for it to be recognized. And so I think when we're speaking about legacy, what does that look like? Is beyond you. She fought to leave something that her children's children can say, my grandmother did this. She was instrumental um, in bringing forth, making Juneteenth a holiday. And I think when we talk legacy, I think a lot of us like to interchange it with just generational wealth. But it's it's more than just money, right? You can have a legacy of immense character. I mean, Martin Luther King has a legacy. He wasn't a rich man, right? But he left a legacy for his children to be proud of, right? Gandhi, right? Legacy is not just your individual monetary goals that you pass down to your family. Legacy to me is bigger. It impacts people outside of you. Michael Jordan, people who do extraordinary things that impact others outside of their family to me is legacy. Hmm. I mean, I guess I agree. Right? I guess I agree. Right, I because <laughs> yeah, legacy. I know how to approach this, right? Financial wealth and generational wealth is great because you do want to have something to pass down, mm-hmm. right? But along with money is character and morals and ethics is who we are. It's like when people talk about the coat of armors, right? And you're like, that's my family, mm-hmm. that's my legacy, mm-hmm. right? And I think <clears throat> when you talk about Legacy is establishing your family's worth, 
your your ethics outside of your immediate family. Like people who donate and they build a library for a school, right? You're like, well, this person was such a philanthropic person that they donated to the school and that legacy is there. I mean, legacy is all around us, whether good or bad. You describe you can't do without money. Like, True. Let's talk about Martin Luther King. He didn't have money. For sure. And look at where his family is as far as uh, but he built a legacy on character and on um, civic service. That's what his legacy was built on. His family, with maybe the proper financial tools, sh- should been able to capitalize on his legacy that he left. But his initial legacy wasn't about money. So I think legacy is beyond monetary. It is... It is the ethos, the thing that makes people think of you outside of just your immediate family. For sure. But I think if you was to kind of take a track of his last, I don't know, three to five years, I would pretty I would I would guess to say he would really have been pushing an economic like push to go along with his uh with the legacy of his of the character that he built, you know what I mean? Because that was the reality of the principles of how he died. And I don't think that, you know, when I when I look at legacy, even to us as a people, you know, most of us are we question stuff like, hey, how can um, you know, like, you know, we all talk about the problems of what's the solution. And the truth about it is, is I feel like most of us don't even appreciate or we're not bought into one story or another because, you know, we're not setting out to to stand on the principles that we were like of, of slavery. So we hear it and say, OK, it's pushed down our throat for sure. Slavery did this. This is a part of this is a part of who or where we came from, who we are for sure. Right. But and we but the most of us, we get mad at the fact that um, we just we, we kind of just really stop there. And so everything is uh, what's happening. y'all. <laughs> Wardrobe malfunction. Right. <laughs> you know, so basically I'm saying like most of us just stop there. Right. And so right. we talk about generational wealth. But I really question if we really want that, if we really want a legacy, because we typically stop at the fact that we were slaves. And the only thing you hear after that really will be somebody like the whole civil rights movement. But that was through most of that was policies that was that was. But we stopped there. We don't really champion like a like the, the black lady fine who champion of telling, even though she's capitalizing on that. And it's and she's making a, a billion dollars through the through the Uncle Nearest brand for for whiskey for sure. But she's telling this guy's story from somebody else who got famous through Jack Daniels that he was the 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 master brewer. But she championed telling his story, and so I think some of that stuff, like when we talk about like what's the solution, a lot some of us have to buy into somebody's story that we kind of resonate with. Like one person that comes to mind for, for me for sure would be like, so, so John uh, Hope Bryant talks a lot about, um, he talks a lot about Re- uh, Reginald Lewis's uh, story. And I watched the interview he did. I can't remember this white dude's name, but he was like the financier of like a lot of stuff that Reginald Lewis did. He would fund a lot of these projects that most people didn't believe in. Mm-hmm. Right. As a, as a capitalist, this guy right. went to, went to, jail for sec fraud all kind of stuff still a billionaire but anyway um you know i i think about people like that like off the backs of of reginald lewis there's always more than one way to tell our story and to act on it and whether you champion from the religion side whether you champion from the business side and, and take up like reginald lewis story and tell his story whether you whether you go after somebody who uh like the uncle nearest uh, whatever that is, I feel like we don't really champion somebody's stories to really, really tell it. And when you think about it, like Martin Luther King, I think if you look it up, like they are down to like, I think they got like, he has like one, maybe two, like great 
grandkids, I feel like. And so a legacy of that magnitude, you would think would breed more life in the family to keep his legacy. You have no, you you have no blood of my blood to continue on after this person, this one individual right now through that person, they can, of course they can have many kids or whatever, but we don't, we don't really embody that. And so when you think about legacy, I, I really question it. Like, what do we really want this? Or do we really just want to sit here and through the backs of like some people say through social welfare keeps us in the kind of keeps us contained in the box? Well, so I think that and that would be the problem. Most of my problems with politics. OK, so I think legacy and generational wealth to me are two different things. I think generational wealth is something that um, we struggle with, that is difficult. But that doesn't mean that they're not black families out there who do it right. There are legacy people who go to HBCUs and their families, families, families been going there. Right. Since the HBCU started all the HBCUs, there were original black families who were there, Mm -hmm. who their children's children's children are still going there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's their type of legacy. And, And for them, there's some type of generational something being passed down. Mm-hmm. So there are black families who are passing down generational wealth. There are black families that are in the Black Hamptons. There are we are there, right? Mm-hmm. There's there a lot of us. Is it the majority? No, it's not, right? But then when we talk about legacy, I think that's like two clicks up. That's like exceptional outside of you just passing down a house, a will and some morals and values. I think that is people who are outside of themselves wanting to really leave a footprint on the world and help humanity out in a different capacity to me. That's legacy to me. When I think about a Martin Luther King, a Malcolm X, the people we know that are famous who have built legacies. Right. But I think through a part of the Malcolm X, a part of the Martin Luther King, even a part of some of the Vanderbilts, right? The farther you get away from the legacy builder, if there aren't things in place to help foster that type of energy, mm-hmm. then you tend to lose it, right? Mm-hmm. They, you, everybody's family who started off, unfortunately, their generation may not be continuing their legacy, right? Just because they're farther away from the legacy builder. And so some of those, that energy, that momentum, those stories are lost. And so people kind of get really bogged down in their own personal crap and not thinking about the legacy builder, right? It's beyond me and my own selfish means. It's about the legacy that I have to keep pushing forward. And I think us as Black Americans... A lot of us are disconnected because we don't have a connection to a thing, right? I was looking up um, Collinwood um, Fine Arts Center here in Atlanta, and I was looking at legacy. I was researching for this episode, um, different types of legacy. And I was like, wow, because I had my baby shower there, and it was such a beautiful estate, Mm -hmm. right? And I started to research it, and the owner was the person who owned and founded Coca-Cola, unbeknown to me. Mm-hmm. But his legacy was rooted in in his heritage from Scotland, right? He was able to trace back his history mm-hmm. from Scotland, right? Like his father was like a lieutenant, like a a general and the wars were like, it was all this history Mm -hmm. that when you read it, I've kind of felt proud for him. Like, wow, he comes from a particular stock. I would want to live up to that. And I think we lose that. Like you said, those stories, because we're kind of stuck at slavery. We don't have the connection to whomever we could be or Mm could have been Mm -hmm. in our past. Mm -hmm. And so I think that to move forward, we do have to acknowledge that, a part of our history, a part of our, a part of our ethos is cut, and we got it. We started from here. Yes, as Black Americans, we had a history before then, but I honestly, we don't know who we were, right? Where we really came from, right? Some of us came from all over Africa or the islands. So when we talk about legacy, I think it's difficult unless you really are rooted in starting something from zero, right? 
who am I? What are my principles? What are my values? What do I believe in? And I got to start it here. I think economics is a great way, but it's not only economics, right? So when we talk about legacy, it's like, well, what are you, I guess the question to pose is what are you, what is legacy and what are you leaving for the world? Yeah. I mean, question would be, you know, what I, it, 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 it just kind of boils down to what's your legacy. And I don't think that we really, you know, you <clears throat> like, I feel like I hope my, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, what I want to pass down to my kids or what I would want my legacy to be is that the Collins clan or Farrah, her team, her, her crew, her tribe, whatever, you know, we leave out is that, we left a footprint about financial awareness, about love and faith. And how do I put that into a product or service that keeps my family's family moving on? I mean, I like that. <laughs> family, faith, and finance. I don't know. That's That would be our legacy, family, faith, and finance. And how do I... Maybe I'll get a coat of arms and, and we and we make it and put it on towels or something and family, faith and finance. I don't try to foster that in my children to start from here because I don't we didn't come with a legacy. I don't know what but, you know, I, our I, family I, represents. We got to start it. So, you know, somewhere. I, think, I think that I think that's the you know, I think legacy. I think legacy. Is a is a byproduct of productivity. And so when you so when you think about it like people who leave legacies it it just so happened that I get to put my family's name on the back of some chair donate to some museum because of a somebody in the family got really strategic about the direction of the family. Correct. And we were we were we were in aligned and focused and we and through us making money by byproduct, we leave a we leave a legacy. And 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 I'm just being. And so when you when you think about black, but people, but it's also t it's also I'm sorry I didn't mean to control, but it is also connected to uh, philanthropy, right? Most legacy you know of, right? Right, but philanthropy. There's a lot of people who died who died rich and wealthy that we will never know of because the legacy wasn't there. Right, but that's that's a testament to their character and what they wanted to do or not do. You only get philanthropists philanthropists from access to money. You only get access to money. Gandhi, he has a huge legacy. He had no money. As a philanthrop what did he what did he do as a philanthropist? No, Gandhi was a, is a spiritual leader. Right, but I was talking about philanthropy. I don't I ain't... I was saying it's tied. Sometimes it's tied to Philanthropy, giving, civil, civilly, is not only monetary. Monetary is one way that you can leave legacy, but you can leave multiple legacies. I agree, money is connected, right, in some situation. Right. But that is not the only way to leave a legacy. Because if, I, just like Martin Luther King, he left a legacy. He didn't necessarily leave money. Right, but my, right? But my point still stands. It's, it's not really about the money. Okay. Let's, let's, okay. It's not about the money. Okay. It's about a focal point. Martin Luther King started a project that he didn't know would be legendary, that he would leave a legacy. For sure. And so, but when you think about that and you think about most conditions of us as, as a, we say, we'll, we can, you can champion and say that we have lack of awareness of who we are, where we came from. At the same time though, you can champion and say that there were black people here in America who was a part of America's um, advancement, who built America, who did changes in America, who was successful in America, who had all the things afforded to them and build off of their legacy. And I think the problem with most of us today is, is that we don't have a family or even an individual focal point to even begin to try to leave a legacy. And we're trying to start, uh, we're trying to start our legacy 
of people who we are fantasizing about a legacy that they left without actually doing the history on these people and how they built it. Everybody here in America, whether we want to admit it or not, even through slavery, they built something from nothing. Even even though they used black people as free capital to to that build a, it up. Yes, a very good very business huge, model. Very, free very labor. Huge, people still trying to use it for today. sure. Right. At the same time, though, right, these guys built something from nothing, in a sense. And over time, the advancement of it allowed I them mean, to leave a legacy. Yes, they definitely scaled it. Right. But it was already there. People were using slaves all around the world. No, I'm, I'm not talking oh, about the slaves. Oh, I'm, I'm talking not, about the, the, the building, business model. The they scaled, building, that, they scaled the, that bad boy right, up. To, to build Absolutely. America. So when when I think about, when you think about legacy, I also ha- I have no choice but to think about parenting. And I just had a conversation with my wife about this literally last night. And I said, you know, when I, I don't know, I really don't know personally what legacy I want to leave. Mm-hmm. I haven't really put a coin to it to say Tariq's going to put his flag here. But I, what I do know is, is I want to be one of the greatest businessmen and investors in America, mm-hmm. which as a byproduct, I know I will have a stake in the ground somewhere where, wherever I plant my flag, you know, that let that come about. So for me, I'm going to push my family to focus on this one thing and I'm going to try my hardest to be so self-aware that I don't unintentionally or unconsciously pass down traumas to my children to allow them to be free thinkers. And we don't have enough free, independent thinkers. My legacy or what I build might not be what my kids want to do. For sure. The way I parent them, right, is coming from a place of you. You, we as parents today, you are really in a tough spot because you have a lot of financial literacy at your fingertips. Because the most of poor, most poor people are just financially illiterate. You got a lot of financial literacy at your fingertips. At the same time, you're still like indoctrinated with the stuff that your parents had, the stuff that they dealt with, the single family, the single parent background. The ghettos, I mean, the the public schools, the all this and that, for sure. The crime rates and all that stuff, and how high it is. So we we automatically put limitations on our children that we might not intentionally be trying to do, but that's that's that stunts a legacy. And when you think about through slavery, you know why we're so why we play the line so so tight. Because, you know, these guys play a long game as far as what they want their legacy to look like. Some of them think about it. Some of them don't. But one thing is is constant is, is they will make you think that it will make you not even want to build. Like, don't go do this because you can't do this. You can't. And that's all you hear. And but we that's put the that, 500 years of generational brainwashing and trauma that's innate almost, right? Sometimes, but that's what I'm saying. You got a hard task. A lot of times people say things unconscious. When they talk about an unconscious bias, you don't even know why you say it, right? And so it's something that's been passed down through generation through generation. But initially it came out of slavery, out of trauma, out of fear, right? They talk, you know, you know, so I get what you're saying in that, in that construct for sure. Um, but I think in that regard... You know, your ethics, your morals and and how you view things has to be so heavily rooted in your family. The family structure is super important because outside of what your children want to do at the end of the day, if they know our family values, our faith, finance and family, regardless of what they're doing, one of those three pillars or all of those three pillars should be. In something that you do right in something that my family believed in faith, finance and family. It's all about family, faith, and finance. So if I start a business, whatever I do, I know I need to have those three pillars involved in everything that I do, right? And so that continues the legacy of what you initially want to start. So e- so monetary, yes, that's a thing. But if there's not principles and values and things to support why you are doing what you're doing, it's just money. It's just a thing. There's nothing behind it to keep the family focused and driven on keeping your legacy alive 
And I think that's what happens from generation to generation. The stories aren't being there. Hey, let me sit down and tell you about your granddad, about your grandmother, Farah, Miss Fat Financial. She believed in family finance and faith. This is what she did for the family. This is how she brought finance in the forefront. Every family should be telling those stories about what you did to keep the legacy going. And if that's not happening, there is no legacy. There's just money. You're just passing down money. And so then the next generation has no, no, no emotional connection to you building it. So it does get wasted. They start to blow it. It be becomes materialistic because it's just money. They got to fight with today's society of capitalism and consumerism. So I could blow my family's money. It doesn't mean anything to me. But if you're not passing down some principles with your money, it's, it's, there's no legacy. There's no legacy. That's, that's like counterproductive because there are people who pass down money. There are people who pass down family. I mean, who pass down business. And, and what did they say after the third generation is done sometimes, right? We look at, let's say, Michael Jackson. Huge legacy built off entertainment, being the best entertainer. He was, people thought he was gliding. Nobody has seen a moonwalk. What the heck was a moonwalk? He invented a dance nobody's seen. Now, if there's no connection to how great his Michael Jackson was his sons, his son's sons could care less. They have no connection to who or what a Michael Jackson was. And so they'll squander the money. They have no ties, no connection to whatever he built. So I think legacy is, is, is paired with some type of moral code of ethics to help support why you did what you did. Why was granddad amazing? Why was Farah and, and Tiati so heavily invested in family, finance, and faith? Why do we pray every day? Why do we talk about our money and budgeting every day? And so I don't know what that's going to manifest in my children. Maybe London is going to open up a world-renowned camp to fight to, to educate children on money because all she remembers is mommy talking about finance and budgeting and family, right? And so when we talk about legacy, it's not about you today. It's about the little, the people behind you that are coming, right? It's planting the seeds today so that they can reap the harvest for tomorrow. I think that's what legacy is. Legacy is, is planting seeds so that when they are ready to sprout, the people behind you can pick the harvest and they got good fruit. They ain't got rotten fruit. They got good fruit that's built on something. Yeah. I mean, you I mean, people just have to define what it means to them. And I think that I think that uh it's a good question to really kind of sit with, you know. I think just as much as we might have every excuse to not hear good stories, uh, as far as, you know, what our parents or grandparents did or what they was trying to do i think at the same time we still got every story to build a better life for ourselves and Absolutely. when i think about legacy i think about um i think about the advancement of our people as a whole and i won't win every battle i won't win every fight but what i do think about is how can i change the condition for my family and try to change the conditions of other people's families. And I think that we don't, we don't intentionally use our trauma and our hardships to overcome them. And when you think about it, that's why I say we stuck at slavery because most of us, that's, that's where we're at. We'll talk about it. We'll, We'll, and then when you pose the question, well, what are you doing? What you, know, you can ask me, what are you doing? Well, I'm intentionally building a business to one day become an investor so that we can fund ideas. We can build more businesses. We can have more jobs. We can employ more people. It is, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than my family, whether my kids decide to champion in on it or not. It's, it's, it's way bigger than that. And when you think about, us as as black people and the legacy that we we choose to 
leave or not leave. I think we have enough right here to say from where we came from to chart a new path, to chart a new direction, to be somebody different. And we've tried all the things, but the simple, but the simple stuff of like building a, a a real family, keeping a family together. We didn't try all the religions. We didn't try all the politics. We haven't really focused too much on the business side, the family side, the community side. And those pillars are are the things that we kind of really, you know, as a people, we we are really lacking. And I think when you when you put all that together, um, and you think about legacy, you know, everybody has that choice. And you get to really kind of, and at a certain standpoint, you get to kind of really sit there in the crossroads and and determine what matters to you, what will you champion and take up, what will what will be, how will you leave this earth, and how would you have put your footprint in the ground? And most of us selfishly don't answer it because you don't want the pressure of the work that comes with it. Some of us do, but then we be, we become defeated. And so we have to have more people who come at us with facts and data on the fact that, uh, black people were, were, yeah, we were slaves. We are more than slaves. That was a stint in our history. Yes. It's years of it, but it's enough of us to recognize it to where we don't necessarily have to pass that down. And, and, and we can intentionally change the direction of that. And I think at the root of that is family. The more families that we kind of build, the more we institutionalize our individual self, the society as a whole will get, will get bigger. So, cause what good is it for us to have many graduates come to a HBCU or go to these other schools and et cetera, to get all these advanced degrees to still, then what are you, what are you putting them to use? Where are you putting them to use? We're still asking for jobs. We're still asking for equal pay. There's not enough of us building that to kind of champion that for our people. And I think that the more of us kind of ponder and sit on that problem, the more of us will become solutions to it. And the more solutions we have, the more people get to build a legacy as a byproduct of just doing something good. I I mean, I don't really, I don't have any, I think I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I don't think we have, you know, because I think as, um, what I will say is though, as I think you do have to speak life into a situation. And I hear a lot of people talk about what we ain't, right? But it's a lot of what we are. Mm -hmm. We are a strong people. Mm -hmm. We, the future is right ahead of us. We really don't know a lot. We say what, yes, the statistics show certain things, but they also show that black women are, you know, graduating leaps and bounds that there are more black millionaires today than there was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we have to speak life into what it is. Yes, there's a, there's work to do. Absolutely. But the world is our oyster. You don't have to set up roots here. You could go around the world, right? You yeah, can, you ain't, ain't nobody leaving America. <laughs> it's not about leaving America, but you can, you ain't leaving America. You can set up shop, right? We right talk about a, Cleveland Avenue. listen, we talk about a friend of ours who set up shop in foreign countries who went to the Philippines and set up a, and set up a business who went to China and had a manufacturing company. We got to get in the world game The yes, the United States is a small part, right? We can't just look at our square and go, dang, this is all this. It will kick outside of the square. Don't get boxed into what somebody else is putting you in. You can go to the islands. You could go in it. Buy a house there, invest there. There's people online who trade. The world is your oyster. So I say all that to say, don't be limited by the square that people are putting you in. There are a lot of people who say we aren't black people ain't this and we ain't that. I think we are a whole lot of everything positive and plus. Do we have work to do? Absolutely. But we've come a long way. We've been 500 years enslaved. Can you imagine starting a race and you got to stand there for 500 years? You are so behind. And I look and say, wow, look at us today. 
There's more millionaires, more people trying, trying to leave legacy. So we as educators in the financial space just have to keep educating, giving, 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 giving. Now, does that mean that everybody is going to get it in our generation, in our lifetime? No. Mm. But who's to say 50 years, 100 years when we're no longer here that somebody listens to this podcast and go, minding your biz left a legacy. I listen to that. I look at E.T., his speech, he didn't do it today. He's building his legacy off of you got to succeed more than you want to breathe. He did almost 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So your legacy sometimes is not necessarily what you do today. It's how people receive it later. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think that we will not know really us as black Americans, our footprint until maybe 200 years later. You know, we're starting a race that we were standing still for 500 years. And so I think we've come, a, we've come a long way. We've done, we've done a lot and we've, and we've fast forward a lot of stuff. So I think legacy building is about leaving something behind. It's doing the work today and leaving something behind. It's about. It's also knowing that the narrative can change because I, when I look at it, like our, our it legacy change. is, you know, the the slavery, the in chains. The it's Black about Wall all Street. of that. We need but to champion that. That's part of our legacy. We need to champion that's that. That's nothing to be ashamed of. That's to say we are people who have who have gone through, brought here, no language, stripped away, selling your mother, your sister, your father. You know what I mean? Not being able to read or write, being treated as property, going through when the system was stacked up against you. We still we still show rise creating. I mean, granted, it's not healthy, but we created soul food from scraps. Okay, we created the trash that was thrown outside. We created and made it soul food. And this is why I recently. So so instead of saying, I don't want to talk about slavery, I don't know. We should look at slavery and Mm -hmm. say, look what we have come from. Mm -hmm. That's that's where our strength lies. And this is what I was talking about, like before we got started, as far as uh, one of my new train of thoughts is, is like we just we don't own America enough. It's always like America, and then it's always like you know it's black people in America, like but we don't really we're not that. That's why we're called Black Americans. Not, they don't say White Americans because right, they feel it's their country. But, but we <laughs> as black people, we don't we don't really own America, and we're not patriotic enough. We're not we we don't have that buy in to America to own and and accept the identity and reality of what we, of who we are where we what we've been through to champion on that legacy when i think about me leaving a legacy i really would i would one day want somebody to say or want it to be known that you know i succeeded in spite of all these shortcomings for sure and that means so much more to me than anything else because there's another person who can identify with me to say there's a level of success that I can reach. Yeah. When I think about Reginald Lewis, when I think about the Robert Smiths, when I think about the Jay Z's, when I think about you know all these people who've hit so many um, legacy l- status, right? I think about there's somebody there's there is a person whom I can uh, grab onto their identity to be like. And when you when you and that's also owning where you came from. So when you look at stuff and say like, oh, my dad didn't do this or my mom didn't do this. You have to really own that to try to change it. And the legacy can be changed. So we have to own our identity for who we are, where we came from in order to champion it, to give it a new direction. And the more of us who can say we made it in spite of absolutely whether that's a job, whether that's a business owner, whether that's a banker, whether that's a whether that's a, uh, a you know, a legacy from a, a political or social standpoint, we have to own every part of that to say we did this in spite of. Absolutely. I think if we. And that's legacy building. I think absolutely. I think the glass is half full mindset. Right. I think absolutely. Right. When I instead of taking the legacy and go, oh, my, my mom's mom, they were, you know, we were all single moms. We were we were here out of wedlock. I would say, you know, my legacy is built off strength. My, my legacy is built over overcoming. Mm-hmm. My legacy is built off of, you know, something else besides the negative. Turn those situations into, like you said, something else that you could be rooted into. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So absolutely. I think legacy building um, 
is about your family. It's about education. It's about planting the seeds today for something that you can harvest tomorrow. I think it's beyond you. I think the issue sometimes is that we're selfish. We're selfish. And we want to reap our rewards today. We want to be able to plant and pick today. And so when you talk about legacy, you're talking about tomorrow. You're talking about the generation behind you. And I think it's an Americanism to be selfish. And I think we are her. We are Americans. And a lot of us um, are selfish. And we are, we are right now people. That's black, white, everyone who is... Who's, who, who has absorbed this American dream, we want it now. I don't, think it's that, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. The selfishness is what guided people through. People have something to focus on. Right now, we... No, I think that I think during... We wouldn't have the civil rights movement if people were selfish. If you only thought about your advancement and not us as a collective advancement, you wouldn't have a lot of these movements. Yeah, but I think you're looking at it wrong. If I didn't care about me and my advancement, I wouldn't have been out there fighting for it, it to begin with. It just so happened that we all have the same type of uh, no. shortcomings. No, I think I think if if it was selfish, the people, the movement needed all of us, right? Every, you know, when we're talking about the the bus boycotts, the people that sacrificed, possibly getting fined or pulled over or jail for carrying people, could have been selfish and say, "No, I ain't doing that." There were black people who were like, no, I ain't doing that. I'm good. I go to this HBCU. My family has legacy. I'm not helping. I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? I think, you know, movements and legacy building is 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 not thinking about you. It's thinking about the people behind me. In the, you know what I mean? People spend money. I see what you're saying. Haphazardly that, because you're you're thinking about you. You're self centered. Like I want this now. I want this. Today, not like I'm working for this for tomorrow. No, I don't need to buy this. I don't. You're like, no, life is about living. I'm going to FOMO. I'm going to live it up. You know what I mean? And you're thinking about you and how in, in fulfilling your ego and, and like. That's how the world works, though. Nothing great, nothing mm-hmm. great, nothing of great magnitude gets done without a selfish trait. You're really thinking about yourself. I don't care how you box this around. This is about me and my advancement. It just so happened that my advancement and what I care about, you also care about too. But somebody has to vocalize that for you to connect with somebody to say, oh my, for instance, there's a train of thought that I have when it comes to like my views as far as business, the social construct, the politics. When I ran across Thomas Sowell, I said, oh my God, he." thinks how I think, or he's right. speaking about the stuff that I you care was about. Connected. That I was, right. And I made a connection, right? I don't buy into the whole, like, putting a label on, like, oh, you are a conservative, because I also, there's some stuff that I just just don't agree with, right? right. But, but through facts and data of what we can see, the data to prove certain stuff, logically, I... I align with that. You so do. selfishly, for sure. So selfishly, I think you should. I think you should lean into that. I am. <laughs> so, but selfishly, right? That's me. Like these are my views on it. Yeah. And so selfishly, I'm like, no, you got to keep certain stuff like this alive. It just so happened that a, a couple of us might have some of the same come from the same school of thought. So then, if we're if we socially connect, that's what that is. When when you have people who who are who are confined, take black people out of it. Think about um, think about other nationalities that come here, mm-hmm. from the Jews to the Mexicans to all the people who come here. Yeah, that's selfish thinking for them to. In the sense, I want a better life for me and my family. Right, but yeah. they they are concerned with them, and they and everything that they do is an act of the family. That's a selfish thing. I'm not gonna. You're not. You're not gonna. You're not going to sabotage my family because I'm thinking about my family. That's a selfish act in a sense. Uh, I mean, I guess we could have another episode on that one. That's I a think selfish that's act. A, I, don't, I disagree. I disagree. I think selfish. That's me pulling all the resources for me and my people. Because if you're doing it for your pee-pee. family, that's, that's to me the, def, that's the oxymoron of. 
Yeah, but think about think about think about what that really. I mean, I'm talking about what that really. really I'm talking means. about I'm talking about an individualist personality that is about you, right? Because when you think about the immigrants that come here, they're very communal. They're doing it for they're their about family. Them. They're like, we're all going to live in this house to support whomever brought this store. We're going to support and work for them. Right. I could be like, no, I'm not doing that. But that's a selfish act because they're only bought in on, the, on it's their a, stuff. It's a communal mindset. It's us trying to help us as a family. That's not selfish. But stay tuned, I maybe on you. the next episode. We're gonna we gonna die. We yeah, can I go. That as I name. don't. Well, y'all let us know. Let us know for the so next one. Is it think, selfish or not? But we talking about legacy. Your legacy <laughs> is how you can build legacy. What that do looks you like. build is a legacy off of selfishness? Is that? I a, think you do, but um. The jury's still out, apparently. So we'll see y'all on the next episode. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell, leave a comment, share this with your people. Don't be selfish and share it, right? <laughs> now, that could be That's selfish. That's the form of selfish. I, I think what I'm saying is there's two different types of selfishness, <laughs> right? And so, but uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and uh, hit that bell. And we'll see y'all on the next episode, y'all. Peace.